welcome back to another episode of the Worship Leader Training Podcast. This is Alex Infiegin, your host, and today we're going to be talking about using vocal cues to help your congregation sing. But first, our recommended product of the month is Planning Center. Planning Center is the most robust, easy-to-use software that you can use to schedule your teams and plan your services. There are so many things it can do, I can't even list them all, but Lucky for you, there's a free trial. If you go to planning.center, you can try it out for free. And then after that, it starts at $14 a month. My favorite feature of Planning Center that I use all the time is the matrix view. And what that is, is you can literally look at all of your services planned out for however many months in advance you want. And you can schedule your team in a drag and drop grid. You can just grab your players and drag them into the certain slots that you want. And you can kind of see who's scheduled each week and you don't have to do it one week at a time. You can also do that with your song planning. So the matrix grid is awesome and saves you a lot of time. Check out Planning Center at planning.center and uh, be sure to use the free 30-day trial that they give you. All right, let's get into our episode for this month. As a worship leader, our job is not to sing, but to help the people sing. Obviously, we're going to sing, but that's not the primary function. Our job really is to be the facilitator of the congregational choir. And one way that we can help facilitate this congregational choir is by helping them know when and what to sing. And we can do this by using vocal cues. Vocal cues are the things that you say or the things that you sing that help your church know where you are going next in the song. The key to vocal cues is really to use them any time there is a fork in the road of the song. So at any junction where the song can go two or more directions. Basically, you never want the congregation to be asking, ah, what's coming next? You know, that feeling of like, ah, I don't know what to sing. Like, what's the next lyric going to be? And are we going to go to the bridge or are we going to a double chorus? And so You never want them to feel that feeling of, ah, what's coming next? You never want their brain to interrupt their heart. And vocal cues are the thing that helps them feel confident. It instills confidence in your congregation that they're not going to sing the wrong thing at the wrong time. And when they're confident in where you're going and where the song's going, well, guess what? They're going to sing out confidently. Some typical places where you might lose people are at the end of an instrumental, right? Like they're not sure how long that instrumental is going to go on. They're not sure when you're going to start singing again and what they will be singing next. So that's a place where people feel that, ah, what's coming next? Uh, Possibly in between double choruses, they might be thinking, okay, I know we're doing a chorus. What's after the chorus? Are we going to the bridge or is it back to the chorus? So they're not going to know in those moments where you're going next. Uh, you know, after you sing a chorus and you've got like the musical portion before the verse, they know they're going to go back to the verse, but they're not exactly sure when they should start to sing. And so what we do with vocal cues is we keep people on the train. We say, here we are, this is where we're at in the song, and this is where we're going, don't be afraid. And it, it just instills confidence in them, and then they'll sing them out. So those are vocal cues. Now, here are seven tips on using them. And I'm actually going to grab my guitar and give some examples. So I got my guitar here and I'll croak out a few tunes for you. It's 6 a.m. as I record this, so you'll have to excuse me, but I just feel like it'll be helpful to hear some of the things I'm talking about. So the first tip of using vocal cues well is to sing them. You don't always have to say them, you can sing them sometimes. So here's an example from Brenton Brown's song, Joyful. The bridge goes, Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Sing that again now, Jesus, you. Right, so sing that again now. Because they don't know if if you're going to repeat it. You could just say, sing it again. Or you can sing it. Sing that again now, Jesus, you... Right, or... uh, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing, open the eyes. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Right, so sing, open the eyes. Kind of, you can do that. Um, 
the song, the stand, the chorus, or I guess it's technically the pre-chorus. What can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. What can I say? So you just, you sing it in between because they don't know where are we going next. Or there's that song, Worthy, Worthy. I don't actually know how to play this song, but the youth band does it at our church. And, uh, you know, it goes, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, worthy, worthy is your name. And, you know, if you're going to do a double, you can go, Worthy is your name, we sing holy, right? So we sing, it kind of tells the congregation, we're going to sing it again, right? So th that's tip one, sing them. The other tip is obviously you could say them. It's not bad to say, uh, let's sing, my hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built. So you can say the thing and we'll talk about the timing of when to say them. You know, so let's just actually play that. So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So if you have a little intro like I do on my arrangement, say sing my hope my hope is built right so you say it and you got to say it at the right time you don't want to say it too early so for example let's sing my hope is built Why would you, you know, why would you say it that early? So, but sometimes like we accidentally do and then we're like, oh crud, now I got to wait for the whole intro to finish before we sing it. And that actually takes away confidence from the congregation. So you don't want to say it too early and you also don't want to say it too late. So here's an example of saying it too late. Same intro for My Hope is Built. Sing My Hope is Built, My Hope is Built on, right, obviously. That's a bad vocal cue. You stepped over the bar that you needed to start singing on. And they're just like, ah, so, and you're like, ah. So yeah, not too early, not too late. Another example would be like, praise is rising. Sing praise is rising. Praise is rising. That's like, that was a good one. Here's a bad one. Sing praises rising. Praises. That's bad. Too early, right? Uh, and then obviously you can do too late, but you get the point. So you you want to. It takes practice, and and that's one of the points later on is you, you need to practice these things. Another tip, um, as you say them, is to use variety when you say them. So. You can do a couple things, like so far on those two songs, My Hope is Built and Praise is Rising, I said the actual lyrics that they're going to sing. So you can say the lyrics, right? Or you could say, let's sing that verse again. Or you can say, let's proclaim this. Or let's make this your prayer. Or you could say, let's sing it out. Or sing it to him. Or, all right, let's think about these lyrics. Or like sometimes in Man of Sorrows, you know, we get to the last verse and... Uh, <laughs> Um, Open to thee. And we get to the verse about the resurrection. I say, let's sing the good news. Or I'll say, and now the good news. See, the stone is rolled away. Right? You're actually pastoring them in those moments to be aware of the lyrics that they're singing. So that's the third tip is to use variety. If you do say them, use variety. The fourth tip is the tone. You want to match the tone in the same timbre that you're singing in. You don't want to speak. If you're going to speak them, you don't want to speak them lower or higher than the timbre that your voice is currently singing in. So I guess an example would be, uh, let's say Revelation song. I remember a girl on my team was leading the song. And, uh, you know, it's like, 
Jesus, your name is power. So that, I mean, that is just wrong. It's like, it actually is a distraction. So what you would want to do is you're up there and you're like, Jesus, your name is power. I'm putting myself out there with this 6 a.m. singing, guys. Be gracious to me. All right. So, um, so yeah, tone. Make sure your tone is right in the range that you're singing in. Otherwise, you're like too low or too high. It, it detracts from the moment. Keep, keep the tone the same. Okay, next tip is actually some nonverbals. There are some nonverbal things that you can do to indicate to the congregation that you're about to start singing. So for example, if we're moving into an instrumental moment, I will step away from the microphone. Uh, I'll just step away, I'll turn towards the drummer, I'll get away, and I won't step back until we're about to start singing. That's a visual cue for the congregation. It's not even a vocal cue, it's a nonverbal cue. Okay, we're not going to sing for a while because he's not even close to the microphone. And then as we get closer to the point, I kind of sneak back. And then as I'm about to start singing, I lean in to the microphone or I turn my head towards it. And that's a cue for everyone. That's a cue for the lyrics people, the slide people. That's a cue for the congregation. That's a cue for the band and the singers. So stepping into the microphone is a great way to do that. Also, breathing loudly sometimes. For example, let's go back to like the stand. So I'm going to lean into the mic here. You can, um, when is he going to start singing? Used to be for creation. When is he going to start? Well, I don't know. So what I'll do is I'll be like, used to be for, hopefully you could hear that in the recording, but I take a deep breath into the mic and that helps people realize, all right, here we go. So that's a really great way to do it. And also the slides behind you or on the sides of you, wherever you have them, those can be a nonverbal cue. So I always tell my slide people, you never want the congregation to think about, "Uh uh-oh, what's the next slide? Again, you don't want their head to interrupt their heart. So the slides should be up there early, and that gives them a cue on what they're singing next as well. One thing that I tell our slide people is, as soon as we sing the first sound of the last word on a slide, click the button to the next slide. The first sound of the last word is your cue to click the button to the next slide. Because once they've said that first sound, they already know the rest of that word and they're ready for the next batch. What's the next batch? So the slides are a nonverbal cue that help your congregation feel comfortable about what's coming next. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier that I'll mention now is that you can actually help people know when to come in and when not to come in by holding out your vocal note over potential bars where they could come in. So for example, on How Great Thou Art after the chorus, um, they could come in after a four count. But if you don't want them to come in after the four count, you can hold your vocal note over the four count and so they have to wait for the next bar to start. For example, I'll show you. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, they could come in right there, and because I stopped my note early, they might accidentally come in right there. But if I want them to not come in till the second bar, you should hold the note longer than the first bar. So here's how it would sound. How great thou art. So right there, I didn't even give them the option to come in early. So they knew, okay, we're waiting here. So that's another thing you can do that I highly recommend. The other thing that I'll say about uh, vocal cues is to not overdo them. 
Don't overdo them. It can be a distraction if you're literally every single verse and every single chorus, you're saying something. And I personally have a tendency to to overdo vocal cues, but that can be just as much a distraction as not saying them at all. And so you have to find this balance. And it it really is a thing that you learn with experience. But a good rule of thumb is if the church knows the song and the structure of the song well, and you do it often, you can basically just stay out of the way and let them worship. So it is something that you have to balance and kind of figure out with time and experience and practice. And that's the last tip about vocal cues. Practice them. This is something, especially if you're a new worship leader, it's not going to feel natural. It's not going to be easy. And so you have to practice. You have to work hard to sit in your office, play through the songs and think, okay, where am I going to lose the congregation? Where are they going to be unsure? And then practice. Use variety. Say them. Sing them. Try them. Try things out. So those are my seven little tips on using vocal cues to help your church sing well. Again, the recap of it is literally just this. Make sure your congregation knows where you're going so that they feel comfortable. Instill confidence in them and they will confidently sing out. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Check out all the links in the show notes. There are ways for you to contact me. You can email me. You can even leave a voicemail for a future episode. You can share this episode very easily by clicking the links and you can leave us a review. All those things are in the show notes and more. So check out the show notes in your podcast app. I hope this episode was helpful to you. Please pass it on to a friend and I will see you next month for another great episode. Hopefully all of them have been helpful and thanks for being a part of this community. I am so blessed by you guys. Go lead well. God bless. Talk to you soon. 